I've come up with a genius idea to fix collections or possibly the stupidest idea ever to ruin collections, but that's where I need your feedback on if this video is genius or not. Cheers. So what problem am I actually trying to solve? Well, people like Risu Wasaka here have some of the top collections on the game and you'll see people like him complaining on Twitter that collections aren't rewarded enough. And I think what he's specifically talking about, I don't want to speak for him, is being this top collector, you know, ranked one. Um, he's probably got some special edition cards. Yeah, he's probably got some, you know, he's pretty much got the whole collection and he doesn't get any additional benefit from, you know, a plus at 750 mark. He's on a score of 1,900 for his IX collection, for example. So one reason I want to fix that is because obviously it annoys people like him that do go that extra mile. But I do think it is worth rewarding those sorts of people. Why? Well, it benefits so rare. They spend more on cards. There's a little competition. It's easy to see who is first. It's not like, oh, who's the best collector? You know, it's clear cut. But at the same time, I think there's a bigger issue with collection bonus. I actually think it's overpowered. Now, I'm not sure how people think this is um, agreeable or disagreeable. But for me, if I go out and buy Palmer, Saka, Salah, uh, Bruno Fernandes, Emi Martinez, and you go out and buy Salah, Van Dijk, McAllister, Allison, Kelleher, why are you getting a 5, or it's probably not 5% for 5 cards, but why are you getting a 2% bonus on your scores versus my scores? Now this was introduced a long time ago on so a year, year and a half ago, maybe even two, but I still believe that this is too heavily linked to SO5. Being a collector should reward you with collection points, not with, you know, so rare SO5 fantasy football scores. Now, I don't want to go and change all that. You know, my personal account, I've gone on perfectly got collection points for teams I don't care about to get that XP bonus. So we can't just nuke that. That is far too far. But to say we can't make any changes for it, I don't think is true as well. So I think for next season, I would love if we had made some changes that I discuss in this video, potentially, I need your feedback on whether I'm being stupid here, um, that would actually improve it for next season. Because that's the sort of issue. It's like the top, top collectors don't get rewarded enough and the middle in between get rewarded almost too much compared to the other circumstance. Because what scares me with that three, four, five percent bonus is that it encourages people to just play the same team. And I think it's hugely, hugely underrated just how much fun this stacking meta sucks out of so rare. At its core, it's a fantasy football game. It's a global fantasy football game. The joy is picking up players from all these different teams that you see peaking. You might have watched a game of football and thought, do you know what, this lad's underrated. That's the fun of it. You know, the scouting element, this daily selection of that. Now, at the same time, I understand people love stacking. I don't want to take that away from people and, you know, force competitions like the anti-stack and force that across every single division. Because at the same time, I know people love buying one club because it's their club, they support it, they get to watch it every game, they might even be in the stadium every game, and every pass matters, every goal matters, every assist matters, saves for keepers matter. So can we try and fix all of that? That is my suggestion for today, where... You won't leave everyone happy, but the game will be in a far better scenario, in my opinion. Feedback if I'm wrong. So my potential controversial take here is that I've got five cards that get me 110 points, which get me a 2% bonus. And for me, that is overpowered or not worth the reward. You know, I've been given that 2% and I would say, why? You know, I don't think that makes the game any better. I think that encourages people to do two things. One, stack the same teams, which I just described as boring a couple of minutes ago. And two, you have to have to get them from the primary market. You have to go on auction or to the instant buys. The secondary market is just struggling. Now, I know that benefits so rare, but I think overall this change would benefit so rare more than they would lose from, from just taking away from the primary auction because you still need a good collection score. My actual suggestion is that this lower end is too overpowered. If we start accruing points from 100 and from a 100 collection score, you actually start getting the XP bonus. That seems more realistic to me. That's rewarding collectors of the club. That's not rewarding people like me that just wanted a player and a backup player and got a 2% bonus on someone else that went and got four or five different players from different clubs in the Premier League. So if we move this up, so 100 points actually gets you 0% and only from plus 100 you start getting bonuses. 
that is going to enable some benefits. Now, I'm not going to say to move this 750 points up by 100 as well, because I, I have got to 5%. I know it's a challenge. I know you have to get so many different cards that you might not want. So bear with me for now, but keep in mind the fact that these top collectors, like Risu I showed before with all of his 5% and he's had like a thousand extra collection points, which, which really mean nothing. Those will start being rewarded soon with signed shirts, tickets to those, you know, ticket, in this case, tickets to Newcastle games or whichever, you know, team you collect. So for me, that begins to become overpowered where you've got 5% on every card and you're getting signed shirts, which regular players or people that don't you know force themselves to, to do the collections are not getting so in order to correct that where everyone can sort of be happy we have a bigger problem on so rare which is supply and demand supply will always outstrip demand as every single year there is new cards come into the market now the way to fix that is again controversial it's a burn mechanism now I don't think the actual burn mechanism itself is complicated I think the intrinsic value like if, if I gave every so rare so rare fan an option would you want an option to burn cards that's sustainable and works I think everyone would click yes but the problem is people look at it and think well you even need to give out too much or it's just too risky or any other points introduced with it so let's try this as a burn mechanism once you've shifted the points upwards to actually get this, if you enable cards to be burnt, but burnt into the collection, so what that means is that, say my Dubravka, he would be burnt in there, so I'd keep all of his score at 30, or if I hold him for a couple of days longer, I'd get to 90. If I could burn that into the collection, and let's say I get an extra 50 collection points for that, puts him on 80 points, but I can no longer use him. So what that does is for your very low tier cards, for your tier fours, your tier fives that you can pick up for pennies. You know, I picked up some, I picked up Bettinelli for about four pound here. I would be happy to burn him into the collection to get 50 more points. So what that enables is the very low tier cards, which a lot of people are getting fed up for being so useless on so rare, become useless A for collections, but if that card becomes valuable and usable, let's say Bettinelli makes a transfer and becomes a usable SO5 card, there's now less supply of him on the market. So the, you know, the price impact is better. The price should in theory go up of that player. So what that enables is that when collection points come in, there'll be a proper, you know, fan race to see who wants what's ever on the table. So if you say the top rare collector, is getting tickets to Chelsea versus Arsenal, Stamford Bridge VIP. Then you're looking at your collection and you're saying, right, I've got two days to go. I've burnt all of the tier fives. I've burnt all of the tier fours. Okay, well, what about a tier three? What about an Nkunku? What about burning a Drewsbury Hall that might have utility? I'm gonna do it. And that's where you get a bit of strategic decision making and you get genuinely useful cards burn as people strive to become that top collector, get rewarded with that bonus. And I think it would be like a once a season thing where you have a leaderboard and you say, right, on March 31st, who's ever got the most, is there even a March 31st? I think there is. Whoever is highest on March 31st is getting all these rewards in you know, April, May, June. That's when they're all happening. And I genuinely, genuinely think it would be so useful for SoRare to cut the supply, reward genuine players, and at the same time, not overpower what I think is an overpowered collection bonus even more. Because at the end of the day, all you've done is buy players from the same club. It's far easier than trying to find valuable players from all different clubs in the Premier League or Champion Europe or Challenger or all around the world. So I think that's sort of my concept, you know, it's a burn mechanism where the XP is slightly shifted. Now, of course, if you've got a 2% collection like I have on Newcastle and Chelsea, I'm going to lose them. And that would be annoying because I've just bought Bettinelli, I've just bought Bergstrom, just bought Tossin, just to you know give the benefit to my main card, Cole Palmer. But I think if you introduce it next season, then everyone's on an equal playing field. It's better for so rare. I think it's better for the collectors. Let me know what you think. I'm happy to think this could be crazy. I only came up with it yesterday and I thought, fuck it, let's get it in a video. All the best. Cheers.